power on. Okay, welcome to the big show. Uh, this is Becoming an Artist Live. It is a travel and photography show where it's all about you. I help you kind of unlock that creative awesome inside of you. Every week we're at a different location all around the world. It's a super fun show. And also we do all kinds of interactive Q&A. You can ask questions anytime. That's what Ruby is here for. How are you, Ruby? I'm good. How are you? Good. Doing fine. Fabulous. Uh, do we have any questions yet? Yes, we have got one from another thread. Okay. Can ask that now or in a bit? Just a minute. Let me right. talk about what the show is first, and then, uh, then we'll get right to that question. Okay, so what are we doing today? Um, two things, really. Uh, we're going to be taking some photos here together, maybe some HDR photos. I'll talk through that, talk through my setup and what I'm seeing and that sort of thing, right? And then also we have a special guest for the second half of the show, um, Sir Michael Hill. Um, of actual night uh, will be showing up here. He's a real character. I don't know if you've ever met this guy before, but man, hang on to your internets because SMH is coming down the pike. All right, let me grab this. I'll show people what we're seeing here. Um, we're, by the way, where are we now? We're in New Zealand. We are between uh, Queenstown and Arrowtown, New Zealand. Um, really beautiful, kind of moody day. The sun keeps coming in and out. You see those amazing clouds over there. Those are the Remarkables. Um, oh, hello from Philadelphia. Hello, Patrick Brennan. How are you doing? Um, hello from Missouri, Fran. Yeah, tell me where you're, if you're watching, uh, where you're watching from. It's always so interesting. Hello from San Diego, Peter. Peter with a no second E, sort of a Slavic sounding Peter. He's over there. Uh, watching California. Hello, Sherry. There's the rest of the team over there. Hello, Jane. Guy, how are you? How's it going, Curtis? Um, so he's taking questions. This is all, there's so much going on. It's very difficult. We need a little team here. So Curtis is taking the questions. He's slinging them across the internet to Ruby. And then Ruby will be firing me questions right there in front of my Pinot Noir. Okay, that's the plan. That's the plan. Oh, here's, also here's the mysterious camera. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that soon and take some photos. Hello, John Bruno from Los Angeles. Hello, Teresa Taylor. Okay, here we go. Uh, back to you. Back to you, Jane Guy. Mm -hmm. At Queenstown Life, <laughs> little plug there for shameless little plug. Plug, plug there for Jane. Um, okay. Uh, oh, before I answer that question, um, you know, Facebook has announced this new live thing. Now anyone can go live, and I think it's super exciting. I love live stuff because you never know what's going to happen. It's very spontaneous. It's very real. I think it's a, an amazing way for us all to connect with each other on a whole different level. It's just super exciting. And so as part of this like 24 hours of live stuff, let's like do a fun experiment because you can click um, share um, and you can share this with, um, with everybody, right? Share it on your screen. So that's kind of a fun way to do it. And also as this thing is scrolling by down on the bottom, if you see the subscribe go by, go ahead and click subscribe and you can see all of our shows. It's super fun. Okay, question. hit me with that question. All right, uh, so this is from Dave Wattingley. Uh, have you ever risked your life for a dangerous shot? Um, he, yes, I have. Uh, Not I'll, I'll tell a story about uh, Antarctica. Um, and usually, I'm not like a big risk taker kind of photographer. I'm not like a like, super action hero photographer guy. Um, I, I think I've slowed down a little because I have kids. You know, I've got three kids. And I need to at least have a modicum of responsibility and not do ridiculous things. Um, cause I find like you can actually get incredible shots without risking your life, you know, believe it or not. I know you always see these photographers that are doing like crazy stuff, like they're so insane, but you don't have to do all that stuff. You can get amazing stuff. Usually actually, I, I don't even like to, you know, I pull over with my car and I don't even want to walk more than five steps. I'm very lazy. I like the, I like the layup shots. Um, and there's lots of those around here. But anyway, so I was in Antarctica when many dangerous things happened. I was down there for about a month last year. Um, I was actually down there with Antarctica, New Zealand, um, and we were on a Hagland, okay? I don't know if you know what a Hagland is or not, but it's sort of like a snow tank, all right? There's like a, have you heard the story? <laughs> okay. It's a funny story, yeah. Okay, so it's scary though, but it's kind of funny. So like the front, there's two tanks, so they're kind of connected to each other. The front one has the engine, it just kind of pulls the back one, okay? And I'm in the back with this German woman who like, is uh, she runs around and she like tags killer whales and she like chases killer whales. She's this crazy lady, okay? And she, you know, very German, very serious and like, oh, okay, so I'm going, I don't know what was scarier, this German woman or the killer whales. So anyway, we're going along, we're on the sea ice. Everything is melting because everything melts every year then refreezes. And um, all of a sudden, the front Haglin goes into a melt pool, right? And if it goes through, if it goes through the ice, I mean, that's just ocean below you. There's just nothing, right? 
Now they say these haglins float. Right. Um, I don't have any evidence of them floating. So anyway, they're, now they're in trouble. So they, they pull out, right? And then now we're down inside of it and they can't get us out anymore. We're like slowly starting to sink. And not that this German woman was particularly like uh, cheerful beforehand, but now she was definitely not cheerful. It was getting pretty feral. And uh, we were about to find out if they could really float or not, but it started going down. So we got out of there. And then as soon as we jumped out, we were like chest deep in like melt ice. And I kept picturing myself like falling right through the sea because I know I don't, I don't float down there. <laughs> it was scary. So then I got out of there. Um, I left my camera stuff inside um, and uh, I got out and we, we all kind of set up shop on, on some, some nicer ice that was more stable up there. And uh, it was, I was quite rattled, so I, but I did get a cool shot finally of, of the Hagland almost sinking. I didn't think that was the shot I was going to get, but that's the shot I was delivered. The shot the universe gave me and um, and then we laid out a blanket and I did yoga and I had a meditation to calm myself <laughs> and then like 10 minutes later a helicopter came in Hef my, this helicopter pilot we love that guy Hef he came in and rescued us and uh, we went back to base and then we just had a bunch of whiskeys yeah that was Fair that enough. that was that day I had one shot and three whiskeys that, yeah that's pretty extreme yeah that's very extreme yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a photo. All right, let me talk through my settings and stuff like that. Feel free to interrupt me anytime. Ruby, just jump on in. Yeah, no worries. Um, here, let me grab this for you, Jay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent camera work. We're gonna get a gimbal for one of these, these things, by the way. Um, by the way, don't forget to subscribe, or if you're just now tuning in, uh, click share and share it with your friends. Um, kind of cool to see how many people are watching and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, so this is the view that I'm gonna kind of get. All right, um, here's my camera. This is a Hasselblad HVD90X H5D. I don't know who names these things, but you know, it's pretty um, hardcore. I can't even even remember the name of this camera. I always have to look at the side to see what it's called. Yes. Got a question. Question. Right. So this is yes. from Peter from San Diego again. Okay, Peter from um, San Diego. He's asking if you're done using the A7R. Um, no, I am not done using the A7R. Um, I'm sort of in between worlds. I can't decide which camera I want. Um, I like them both. By the way, these are not sponsors. Whatever I mention stuff, they, these, they, they don't pay me anything. Um, I can't decide uh, which one I like best. Mm. I just took this Hasselblad here um, on a 50-day trip around the world. And it was super fun. Uh, we had a great time. And um, I really like the effect of the, uh, these medium format shots. They come out really clean and, and nice. And I'm still trying to discern the difference, all right? All right, so what lens do I have on here, you're asking? This is the um, 35 to 90 millimeter, okay? So it's kind of nice and zoomy zoom. Um, I'm sorry, 35 to 90, yeah. And I'm gonna stay pretty wide here, all right? And here, you can take this back, Jane. There we go. Um, so what are my settings? Let me take this thing off and I'll show you my settings. Very smooth. <laughs> By the way, this is a, uh, this is a really right stuff tripod. Um, pretty rugged, very nice. It's the travel -y size. Okay, so when I take an HDR, um, for landscaping situations, I'll probably stay at f8. Um, and then what I'll do here, okay, is I'm um, in manual focus just to make sure I get it all in there. And I'll take three shots um, one at minus two, one at zero, one at plus two, and then I run them through um, some HDR software. It kind of gives it that look that I, that I kind of like, all right? So let me, let me set up here for a shot. Boom, boom. Right. How's it going, Ruby? Hi, sitting out, do you want to ask another question? Yes. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so this is from Mike Skelton. Um, uh -huh. I have loved your work for over 10 years and I'm really looking forward to Aurora HDR for PC. When will it be available? All right, this is the hot question. So um, last year we made our own HDR software. Okay, it's called Aurora HDR. Um, and right now it's only for the Mac, all right? But even though it's only been out four months, we already have over 250,000, over a quarter million downloads, which is unbelievable. And we know that Windows is the big part of the market. We know this, and we're working on it. We want it to be perfect before we release it to Windows because it's, it's really important for us to build like a super high quality product. So bad news is you have to wait. The good news is that when you get it, you're just gonna love it. I use it probably like 10 times a day. It's just it's the greatest thing since sliced internet. All right, here we go. Boom, boom. The 
exciting stuff here. And then I just take my shots, I do one shot, boom. And then I dial it down to minus two, boom. And then I dial it up to plus two and I do a boom. Just like that, easy as pie. All right, um, there is auto bracketing on this, but it's not that smooth. I do wish I could just push a button and there's a timer and then it did the auto bracketing for me so I don't have to do all the controls and stuff, but maybe that will come in the next version. And that's actually one thing I like much more about the, the Sony. All right. Question time. Question time. Right, so You're from, a sassy uh, way to interrupt me. <laughs> Ronnie I've never seen you that sassy. <laughs> By the way, Ruby hates me on camera. She might pretend to be comfortable. But she's not. We know there's a huge <laughs> Ruby fan club out there, by the way. Hey it seems guys. to be composed entirely 100% of creepy guys. We've done a few deep dives on some of these comments. And yeah. she also has a large Brazilian contingent. Just the one. There's one. There's one. There's, we may have to put a restraining order on this guy. Okay, okay let's, let's avoid that. Okay. okay. So this is from uh, Ronnie Lockhart. Um, what handheld camera are you using? Handheld camera am I using? Um, well, I'm not sure the nature of the question, but I will try to answer it. Um, I don't know if you can really say this is handheld. I guess you can hold it in your hand, but most people would not really call it a handheld camera. Um, I do use my Sony, which is a bit smaller. It's a medium, it's a uh, mirrorless system. And then the other one that I use um, is a little Sony RX100. Um, that's like a little mini job. I and mean, sometimes I'll run around with that. Uh, but to be honest, a lot lately I'm just using my, my Android phone. Yes, yeah, my Android. And so um, I just take a ton of photos with this. It's great. In fact, I was in Dunedin a few days ago, and Curtis and I were there for this beautiful sunrise. And I had this camera, so I took a, a shot with this. And then I took a, a panorama of the sunrise with this. It auto-uploaded auto -uploaded to Google, and Google like stitched together the panorama for me automatically. And that shot, you know, at a, at a glance is maybe more impressive than I got out of the Hasselblad. So I, I am not loyal to any kind of system. I think all cameras now are incredible. Um, it's mostly just trying to find, make sense out of it. Okay, what are you laughing at, Ruby? So there's a question from the audience. From uh, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> I am not single. <laughs> No, she is not single. I do have a lovely boyfriend. Yeah, Ian. He's he's British. He is. Yeah, yeah he's very British. Yeah. Quite British. Okay. In fact, he, he loves soccer so much. He, every time he comes over, he ignores all of us, and he goes outside and plays soccer with my dog. Good he man. Does. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thanks for that. Guess. What time is it here, by the way? Uh, it is 1.13. one thirteen. All yes. right. All right. Uh, let me know, Curtis, when it gets to around the one uh, twenty mark. 20 minute mark, and then we'll have great Sir Michael Hill join us. He's always full of surprises. Always. All right. He's so. in the green room right now. Yeah. So he's in he donuts in the green room. He's uh, ironing one of his fabulous shirts down, or having it ironed for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I've got a question from Gar Posco. Have you. From who? If you say that again, you're Please. very mumbly. Gar Posco, I think. I'm very bad. Okay. At Gar Postcode. Not me. Postcode. Okay, have you changed your photo taste over the last few years? If you have, why? Um, I have. It's always evolving, right? Like it's a continuum. And I think like your taste in photos and art that changes as you change, right? Um, we get a little philosophical here. Let's get real. But like, hopefully, you would think, you know, as you go on as a person you kind of evolve and become more sensitive or more gentle, or there's like more stuff inside of you because you can appreciate more and you, you sense more about the world, you're more sensitive to everything about you, you become more empathetic and all this kind of stuff. And I think if you're committed to moving forward like that as a person, then your art continues to change also because you do become more sensitive and the kinds of things that you find aesthetically pleasing also evolve. And so I can see that happening with me. And I can kind of see it in my photos and how they change over time. Um, one thing that I'm really currently fascinated with is I am very interested in photos that are mysterious, where things are confusing, where there's a mistake, um, where there's some sort of little mystery in there that you can't quite figure out. Because like you guys, like I look at photos all the time, like I scroll through Facebook or Instagram or whatever, look, 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 look. And I can look at a photo and I can like grok it in like two seconds, right? And then I move on, then I move on.
But I notice that those photos that I stick on for like 10 or 30 seconds, which is a long time nowadays to look at a photo, are the ones that are confusing. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and one of my favorite uh, painters, Pierre Auguste Renoir, he has this theory, and he does it in his paintings if you look at it. Um, he always purposely engineers weird mistakes or mysteries into there. Because when you have this kind of weird stuff happening in, like the human brain hates not being able to figure it out, right? But it also really appreciates the mystery. Because when there's a vacuum, your brain will go ahead and try to fill in that um, gap with your own history, your own knowledge, your own feelings, your own relationships, whatever it might be. And so as the viewer starts to try to figure it out and they fill that goal, they fill those holes with themselves, the picture becomes as much theirs as yours. And I think that's, that's pretty cool. So that's something that I'm, I'm interested in. And I don't really know what it means, but that was a weird answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got that. Yeah. All right, um, one from Nathan Navarro. What HDR software do you prefer to use on your raw photos? Your Burning Man stuff is amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm excited to go back to Burning Man this year, by the way. I'm really excited. This will be my seventh year in a row. Um, it's going to be great. Um, actually, this year I'm buying my own RV along with my friend Renee Smith. And we're going to bring in our uh, Brazilian developer, Yonatas. His job every day is to make us three hot Brazilian meals and keep the RV clean. It's going to be great. Um, so for making um, my photos, I do use Aurora HDR Pro because I use a Mac. Um, you can also make, you know, you saw me take three photos there. You don't have to take three photos. You can, you can just use one raw photo and the result is still just totally incredible. Um, if... As far as my Burning Man shots go, I would not say those are really HDR-y. Some are. Um, by the way, if you want to know more about HDR, I have a free tutorial on, on the website. It's stuck in customs. Um, yeah, so you can use a single RAW inside Aurora, um, but a lot of my Burning Man shots do, don't use that process. Um, I use a bunch of different Lightroom filters that I've created over the years. I've got a thousand Lightroom filters, and um, actually that's like, you know, now we sell our Lightroom presets on, on the website. Like we have a 2015 collection and 2014 collection. And these are, most of these I come up with at Burning Man. And actually that's what gave me the idea. The whole idea to do filters, because my first time at Burning Man, I was wearing these goggles and they were like orange, right? They're steampunky goggles, go incognito. And um, everything was really orange. It looked super Mad Max. Like there were no blues, there were no cool colors. Oranges would come out bright red, reds looked electric. And then I would take off the glasses and everything looked a little bit more plain. So then I thought, I wonder if I can recreate the effect of these goggles in Lightroom. So I just started really bending that thing to my will and doing things you're not supposed to do with Lightroom. And, and uh, the results came out so cool. And then I thought, well, you know, because we had never sold presets. And I didn't know if that many people use Lightroom. Now I, now I know they do. But then we put this stuff up and then it just like sold like wildfire. So yeah, if you're into presets like me, um, they're really fun. So I... I recommend them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip, not in a different third party though. <laughs> All right, a quick question um, from James Salt. What is your strap camera, camera strap preference? My camera strap preference? Good question here. Let me pop this off. I'll show you how this works. This is a big camera for a camera strap. Okay. After this, I think we'll see uh, SMH. It's my little acronym for him. <laughs> um, okay, so this is it. This is the. Um, uh, Peak Design camera strap, the Summit Edition, okay? There's a lot of cool things about it, like for example, uh, by the way, this is the same company that um, we designed our camera bag with, the Everyday Messenger. It's a really great company. Love those guys. Great designers. Okay, so anyway, here we go. Boom, you can pop it off like this. Isn't that cool? And uh, you just pop it right back on if you want to, just like that. And it's smart too, because the way it hooks on, I can still use a tripod and use a camera strap. Isn't that awesome? And then, um, let me show you one of the coolest things about it. This is also on our bag. Is that when you want to adjust this, you just open up this little buckle and you just slide it down like that or slide it up to make it tighter. It's nice because it just sticks on you. You can slide it around like this. It just sticks on your back. Um, and then when you want to use it, the whole thing slides around, okay? You know, there's that other system, I think it's Black Rapid, and it connects here, and your, your camera's always like jingling around like that, it's crazy. But I like how this just kind of sticks there, uh, right on me. Super sweet. All right, um, is he here? All right, come on down. Hello, how's it going? A grand entrance. <laughs> well, so good to see you. Good to see you. Look at this coat. 
Uh oh. Check it out. <laughs> it, it's quite yeah, cold for you. You don't feel the cold, obviously. Well, I do have a coat, and uh, I get all heated up when I'm on, on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So, this is uh, your golf course. It is. Yes. yes, but you're not known as a golf course guy. What are you known as? Oh, well, I, I don't know really what I'm known as. Probably as a jeweler, I guess, really, but uh, <laughs> of all things. <laughs> he does this thing when he, uh, he, he gets up and, uh, at a dinner or whatever, and he always goes, Michael Hill, jeweler. And everyone cracks up laughing. That's yeah. definitely what you're known for. Yeah, Michael Hill, jeweler. That's right. Yeah, um, and, and he's a good friend, and you're an art collector? I am, yes, yes, and uh, I, I'm very keen on sculptures at the moment. Right. Yes. Yeah, so. And so this golf course is really special. Um, uh, I think I joined here right after I moved. I love it because you have art all over the golf course, which mm. is really unique. It is. Isn't it? Um, what made you decide to do that? Well, I wanted to point a difference, really. And, and uh, you were talking about having a point of difference when you look at a, at a, at a picture. And uh, it's the same when you look at anything. Like you look at a golf course, and most golf courses. Uh, look exactly the same, you know, well, not exactly the same, right. obviously, because of the different architecture of the golf course, but, um, yeah, I thought, well, if we could get a, if we could put some contemporary art around here, right. uh, it would have a significant point of difference. Uh, there is art on golf courses, but it's normally quite kitsch or small or, right. or not really, uh, so we went full out, and, and the first, well, one of the first pieces we I purchased really was in Beijing in the in seven nine eight in the art district, and I right. bought those uh, one hundred and ten wolves, which are uh, right. cast iron wolves, which look pretty crazy. That freaks yeah. people out quite a lot. Yeah, I have lots of photos of that. I'll, I'll be sure to share it. We have a we have a group uh, for this show. I'll share that picture on the group. It's it's amazing. It's uh, everyone loves it too. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you have a lot of art at your house too. We we do. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, both Christine and my wife and myself both. Uh, we're quite artistic, and uh, it, I think it, it gives you a point of difference having art in your home. Uh, it shows what you like, really, and uh, I think it's a portrait of yourself. So when you go into a person's home, um, you, to me, you, you're seeing what the person really is like. Right. And um, yes, yeah, so come into our house, and you'll, you you see something. It, it's quite extreme, some of it, but uh, right. yeah. I mean, there's some odd pieces, but. Well, it'd be fun. Maybe maybe we could do a show or do a little art tour at your house. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. that would be. I'm honored that you have one of my pieces hanging in your, in I your do. house. It's yeah. a beautiful piece, and everybody really freaks out when they see that. It's quite, uh, it's it's sort of outside the box. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, like you are, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think my wife wishes I was more inside the box. She's like, just be normal. You embarrass me all the time. Well, that's true. <laughs> And yeah. Your wife is a great artist as well. <laughs> yes, and I want to yes. see some of her stuff when we do the tour. Yes, well. yes, yes. Yeah. She's got some interesting pieces, yeah, yeah. particularly based on uh, at the moment on New Zealand shells, which she's doing a uh, uh, a big study on. She showed me that thing down in your white cellar, that new shell piece. It's amazing. It is it's, amazing. I've it's never amazing. seen anything like it. I don't know, like people that do art like that. Yes. It's a it's a different kind of brain. It right? is. Isn't it? it is. Yeah. Well, there's, I think there's several thousand uh, of these shells that are stitched on a big canvas of the. Yeah. Yes, it's quite unusual. Yeah. It's hard to explain. We'll need to show them. All right. So I want you to tell a story. I'll tell a mm -hmm. quick one first. Um, I've only met two knights right, in my life. And each one of you, right after I meet you, you give me a book all about yourself. <laughs> so I guess we hit it off first time we met up here. And he goes, He's, it's nice meeting you, Trey. Here's a book all about me. <laughs> and it says, like in huge font, it says, think bigger. And there's a big picture of your face on it. But anyway, I went home and I read it. It was great. And what is the most surprising thing to me is tell a, you know, a quick version of the story about um, when you were kind of midlife age and then you had a problem with the house and how it just changed everything for you. Yes, well, my life's been a sort of a... Um I suppose if there's two volumes in your life, uh, the first 40 years of my life were, uh, were pretty hard work really. I faced a headwind the whole way and um, I never really felt I would achieve much. At school I was um, small and timid and was bullied and uh, I left school feeling quite um, unsure about life and um, wanted to become a concert violinist but after a year of doing that my parents uh, forced me to go into the family jewelry business uh, where um, I worked with my dad uh, for 23 years and uh, I eventually managed that shop but I thought that was probably the as far as I'd ever go 
And uh, I married uh, this girl from Yorkshire, Christine. Um, it was 51 years ago. It's hard to believe time has flown so much. And we had two beautiful children and uh, built ourselves a, a very um, interesting home, uh, which uh, was very complex. Um, and it, we ran out of money doing it. It was supposed to take nine months to build it. It took two years. And uh, like anything great, I guess, does take. And uh, we went to the pictures one night. And, um, and when we came out, uh, um, there was a message uh, for Christine uh, and, and she rang up and uh, the lady along the road said, I don't know how to tell you this, Mrs Hill, but your house is on fire. And um, I'll never forget that night as we drove to the fire, um, everything in my life, um, everything had been not too, you know, not too easy and then suddenly I had nothing. And it was a quite a, a chilling experience, but it was also a very uplifting one because um, all my timidness went away that night and I decided that uh, I'd been a fool working for my uncle for 23 years. He never really liked me um, and he always kept me in my place or thought he did. So, uh, so that night I made a, a, a wish to buy him out um, um, and uh, I found a backer. I had no money but I found a backer and we made an offer it was refused and uh, so I started up an opposition. Right. And uh, my uncle still has one shop and I now have 300. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an interesting ride. Unbelievable. Yes. It's great. It's weird how where life takes you. It, my story is um, not totally dissimilar, but I didn't even get a camera until I turned 35. Exactly. Right. And I'm not sure what I did that first 35 years. It's amazing. Um, isn't it? But, you know, it's, you know, it's never too late. I mean, you, you sometimes you have to have something weird happen in your life, something bad, but, yes. like, I mean, Life is actually incredible if you, but you do have to open up. You can't be timid. No fear. No yes. fear. It doesn't mean you're not sensitive, but it just means there's nothing to be scared of, actually, right? No, that's dead right. But yeah. being able to find yourself and 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 do that is is easier said than done. So the most difficult thing is to actually do something. Um, but once you get over that, um, then it's uh, an amazing experience. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so I've seen like there's two. If there were two books written. One book is, is quite boring, and the other one is so exciting, and I'm still living it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's great to know you, Trey, too, because you're a way outside the box thinker, and um, I, I learn a lot from you, and your amazing art and your photography is, uh, is quite inspirational to me and the family and the, and the world, really. So uh, we're very privileged to have you live in our very simple, beautiful Queenstown, New Zealand. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's nice of you to say. Uh, I, feel, I think a lot of you, too. You know. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, we'll, we'll wrap it up now. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, be sure you subscribe and tell your friends and all that stuff. Um, it's, uh, I love doing these things. We have something very special for you next week. Uh, or actually, next show. It's not even a week away. Um, I can't tell you what it is. It's top secret. But your heads will be blown away when you see what, uh, what we have going on next. All right. Well, thank you, Ruby. Did you have fun today? Great time. Everything's going smooth, no so issues smooth. or anything? No issues. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, and let me tell you about one more thing. We have a group on Facebook. It's called um, facebook.com slash becoming an artist. Okay, just one word like that. Um, you can come in there. You can share your pictures. Um, I particularly like it when people get in there and talk to each other. Um, maybe like things you're struggling with in your artistic path or maybe even travel -y things, share your photos, share your portfolio, because I really don't want people in there to be talking about me. It's not, it, the idea of this is much more important than me, okay? Because um, I think we're all kind of struggling through this stuff together. I feel like I'm still learning all the time. Um, I know you still feel like that too, and uh, we're all in this together. Uh, this is just the beginning. And I just want to give you 1,000 thank yous, and I can't wait to see you next time. All right, goodbye. Bye. Oh, no.